Pokemon Go's next season for Go Battle League, the World of Wonders, is going to soon be upon us, and we finally have information on what the moveset changes, move rebalances, and new moves are going to be with this new season of GBL. In this video, I'm going to focus on what these changes mean for the Pokemon in the Great League, the winners and the losers of the Go Battle League World of Wonders update. So scrolling on down to the move updates... So starting out, we have a bunch of new fast attacks added to the game, and uh, they're all pretty terrible. Uh, from what I can tell on the data mine here, we got Metal Sound, a fast attack. Uh, doesn't really impact any of these Pokemon. Psy Wave as a fast attack also doesn't really impact any of these Pokemon. And then you got Sand Attack as a new fast move. It's on a lot of Pokemon. Uh, this attack parallels the Fury Cutter, so we might see some interesting use cases for maybe like Flygon or Palisand or something. Um, but for the most part, either these Pokemon are bad or they already got like Mudshot or better moves. Like Linoon already has Shadow Claw. I don't know why I would take Sand Attack over Shadow Claw and Linoon. Uh, but now it's added to the game. And one thing I think is kind of hilarious with this update is I saw people praising it on Twitter that there were just like a few big meta updates and they really liked that they kept it nice and concise instead of adding a bunch of pointless attacks. And uh, I think they just added a bunch of pointless attacks in a way that doesn't hurt our eyes because I'm pretty sure all these updates are uh, uh, pretty much meaningless. Uh, but let's get to some of the more meaningful updates. So we got Shadow Bone getting buffed to 80 power from 75. The only Pokemon that learns this is Alola Marowak. Alola Marowak has been out of the meta here for a while. I don't think this is going to, you know, push it back in. Uh, but, you know, a little bit of a buff. It'll appreciate it. Uh, Brick Break is going to have its energy cost increased. But now it's guaranteed to lower the opponent's defense stat by one stage. Uh, so... I guess that's nice for, I don't know, maybe some Raichu strategies. I mean, it already got the uh, Trailblaze to play around with and to fight against ground types. So maybe Raichu's not really using the Brick Break, but, uh, you know, like Como O, Hakamo O, that family, I guess. You know, they're doing the Dragon Tail. Decrease the defense, Dragon Tail a little bit harder. Uh, kind of a goofy update there, but not exactly unappreciated. Uh, cross Chop getting a base power increase. I'm pretty sure all the Pokemon that like to use Cross Chop, uh, namely Machamp and Shadow Machamp, have been a little phased out of the meta, so giving them a bit of a buff, definitely appreciated. Aqua Tail getting a base power increase. Now, this is an attack that I feel like didn't need a base power increase, but I guess Pokemon Go decided to increase its power, so uh, Shadow Dragonair around the world, rejoice, you are now a little bit stronger. And then Water Pulse is getting a base power increase to 80 power, and the energy cost is decreased. So Water Pulse may be getting the dig treatment here, finally becoming a usable attack. Uh, this is mostly big news, I think, for uh, Glaceon, technically, because uh, Water Pulse was an event move for it. And then uh, Mantine. Mantine lacks like a good water type attack to hit into the Galarian Stumpfisk and into the Registeel for neutral because when it fights the Registeel, it's just hitting for resistance all the time. Uh, so this is a pretty nice leg up for the Mantine, I'd say overall. Other Pokemon that were suffering with Water Pulse before already had like better or different water type attacks added to them later like Surf, Scald, and Liquidation. So it's hard to say if they're going to be taking Water Pulse back after getting those, you know, seemingly better attacks. Uh, but we'll have to see where the chips exactly fall for the Water Pulse here. All I can really say for sure right now is uh, Mantine, definitely appreciating the Water Pulse update. Technically, maybe Glaceon too. Then we got the attack availability updates, and I like the way that this is structured because, like, the only five Pokemon that matter for the attack availability updates are the first five that we have listed off here. Uh, so, starting off, we got the Gudra with the buffed Aqua Tail, which is pretty exciting. Uh, Gudra is a pseudo legendary Pokemon, so it is slotted to get a community day eventually. And I'm kind of happy that they gave it this nice meta attack without it being locked to being a community day attack. So Gudra definitely doing a little happy dance because it got the Aqua Tail. Uh, Gudra is competitive with the Dragonair because it is a bulkier Dragon Breath user. It can actually subdue the Dragonair and handle some matchups at a shield disadvantage that Dragonair can't. And with that Power Whip access, it can bully down on stuff like the uh, Azumarill and Mud Boys in a way that the Dragonair, uh, you know, can't exactly do. 
Gudra does have a lower attack stat, but if you do pump its attack stat above 122, you could still maintain some of Shadow Dragonair's benefits, such as CMP tying and beating the Frostlass with the Aqua Tail. So that's pretty cool for Gudra. Another thing with that 122 attack stat is that it is an attack breakpoint on the Lickitung, which could be essential to dominating Lickitung in several even shield scenarios. So Gudra has a lot of play going on. I don't know when I'm going to do a Gudra PvP IV Deep Dive. Uh, probably when it gets a community day. Uh, but in the meantime, having greater than 122 attack looking really nice, and then having 115 HP or greater will allow you to maintain the Shadow Dragon Air wins. So, yeah, Gudra has a lot going on. I expect to see a lot more of this going forward. Next, we have Empoleon with the Steel Wing. Empoleon's always been a pretty interesting Pokemon in both the Great League and Ultra League metas. The Waterfall. Sometimes can be a pretty big benefit to it, but it does make it more of like a cup kind of Pokemon. With Steel Wing giving Empoleon a little bit more speed for its powerful charge attacks like, you know, Drill Pack, Hydro Cannon, uh, this definitely is a good buff for the Empoleon. Uh, when it comes to the Shadow versus the Non-Shadow, current simulations has me favoring the uh, the Shadow variation. If you do run a Shadow Empoleon, though, make sure you have at least over a 115 defense stat so you can avoid that nasty Lickitung breakpoint. As far as what role Empoleon is going to have in the meta, it is an interesting like anti-flying option that can manage to Lickitung decently. It's a, a weird little Swiss Army knife. I don't think a lot of players are going to get a ton of value out of the Empoleon, but if you have the right eye for it working in on your team, I think Empoleon could be a very explosive option with its unique resistances comboed with its coverage. Then we got the Big Daddy with the update, the Shadow Claw for Raligator, uh, basically a more powerful and aggressive version of Jellicent. Uh, we got Shadow Claw, we got Hydro Cannon, we got Ice Beam, we got Crunch, we got all the tools we need for Feraligator to now be an absolute menace. And if you check out the early PV Poke rankings, they got Shadow Feraligator at number 9 in those rankings. So yeah, I don't have any quick PvP IV tips for the Feraligator here. I might do a uh, Feraligator PvP IV Deep Dive in the near future though. Uh, because Shadow Claw is a pretty big update for a Pokemon with Hydro Cannon, right? Uh, but I think it is a pretty potent option. Now, to de-escalate the hype a bit, because I know Feraligator is getting tons of love and tons of hype on the internet right now, uh, this guy does have its problems. It can't counter swap effectively into a Shadow Gligar. Uh, so if Shadow Gligar has a one fast move advantage, because, you know, it swapped in on you, uh, Shadow Feraligator coming in to mess with it, it can still beat you in the two shield situation because of all the chip damage and it reaching that aerial ace a little bit faster. Uh, to add to that, Feraligator does lose to the Wish Cash in the zeros and in the ones, and also struggles with the Skarmory in the zeros and the ones. So Feraligator is a very powerful option to hit the scene, uh, but it's not exactly going to be flipping the meta on its head, is what I'm trying to get at here. And then also to add, because it is using that Shadow Claw, it is going to have to answer to the Lickitung. Then we've got Gallade with the Psycho Cut, which is an interesting option. I don't really know where the chips are going to fall for Gallade and Shadow Gallade in the open Great League meta here. I mean, Psycho Cut's really nice, and it's got the Leaf Blade, which is, you know, powerful coverage, especially with Wish Cash and the other Mud Boys popping around. And Close Combat is a lot better than Super Power for a move that's going to debuff you. So that's all very cool for Gallade. Problem is, is Gallade is already like a glass cannon, and Psycho Cut isn't exactly a chunking move for a fast move. Like if you were to compare it to the Surfetched, Surfetched has counter, you can counter stuff down, farm up energy, and then unload on the next thing that comes in. Gallade psycho cutting things down, there'll be less opportunities for it to do that. I mean, when it does happen, that's going to be pretty powerful for Gallade, right? But the opportunities for you to do that are going to be a little bit more limited. So it's hard to say if Gallade's going to be like a, a hot flash in the pan, you know, something that it's very scary, terrifying to see when you're uh, not prepared for it, but in general, it's not going to be that threatening, or it could be just a really strong, nasty guy as a safe swap with its powerful options. We'll have to see what happens, but one thing's for certain, Gallade is uh, faster now and has more potential than it has had before. Then we got a Raquinid getting Water Pulse. So Raquinid has a whole host of issues, but it is an interesting core breaker into a lot of teams. And uh, Water Pulse giving it a strong water type attack 
compared to having a strong bug type attack and the bug buzz does give it a lot more viability especially into stuff like the registeel now it is pretty slow because it has the bug bite but it is still tanky right so i i'd say we'll take the buff right araquanid does show up in the play pokemon tournaments every so often and uh while bubble beam is pretty nasty as a debuffing attack uh water pulse i think is probably going to see a little bit more play on the guy so really uh happy for the araquanid here happy little water bug noises uh then we've got like the whatever kind of move updates we got throw getting brick break we got sock getting brick break crocodile getting brick break cab brawler crabominal they all got brick break and nobody cares uh but thanks for the charge tm tax added to these pokemon um hakamo -O and como -O getting brick break not bad for them they are using the dragon tail uh it doesn't debuff them like the close combat does so i'd say overall an appreciated attack added to their move pool uh doesn't change the game for them in my opinion um but hey you know a new move that works well into their kit i, I don't think they're complaining about it right uh then we got Diglett, Dugdrio, Graveler, Golem, they're getting Mudshot, Starmie with the Psybeam, and I didn't check before recording this video, but I feel like these were all, like, previously legacy moves that, like, weren't TMable for some reason. It was, like, a 2016 into 2017, like, controversy kind of thing, um, but now they're getting added back to their move pools, and they're all, like, I don't know, these guys aren't exactly meta, and, uh, Psybeam's bad, so... I don't know. I think Curlia has the same situation, if I'm not mistaken. Draining Kiss is pretty bad in the game, too, so whatever. Uh, Leap getting Bullet Seed is actually kind of interesting for some limited formats. I do remember, like, years ago, uh, Tho Tactical, like, bragging about how he got, like, his limited uh, Bullet Seed Leaps because there was, like, an error release, but they didn't, like, correct the move on Pokemon that already had it. So he had like two traded Leaps with the bullet seed that he was flexing. So for the limited formats where this does come up, um I guess all players get to enjoy the bullet seed the leap now. And then we got Gastrodon with Earthquake. Which I don't know why they gave it Earthquake. Because Earth Power is kind of better now after the Earthquake nerf. So I guess they're giving Gastrodon charge tm tax come to think of it gastrodon also has the uh the water pulse i don't think it has surf or anything else to compete with the water pulse so hey gastrodon feel good that you got the water pulse now it's a nice little buff to you uh very unfortunate that we're gonna have to spend even more charge tms to use you in the limited metas though that is unfortunate so as far as the big winners go you know we got the winners here with the move availability updates these five and then we also got the mantine uh very nice uh, so I'd say these guys are winners. Other Pokemon that are winning too, uh, Lickitung, definitely winning here because, uh, you know, two of these Pokemon have breakpoints that they have to be conscious of when going up against the Lickitung, and then for Alligator, struggles against the Lickitung. So Lickitung stocks just keep going up. Uh, another big winner here I'd say would be the Attack Weighted Annihilates with the Night Slash. If you check out my PvP IV Deep Dive on Annihilate, link above in the description if you haven't already, an Attack Weighted Annihilate has a bunch of CMP potential and uh, advantages in several matchups, but the main thing is that it is a Lickitung Slayer. So Lickitung feeling a bit stronger than before, and it's already a very strong Pokemon, and then Annihilate, you know, that, that kind of follows it. And to add to that, Gudra could possibly get charge move priority on an Annihilate, which it could take it out with the Aqua Tail. Uh, but if you got the attack weighted Annihilate, well, then you get the charge move priority on the Gudra. And then also with the Feraligator, could possibly get charge move priority on a more standard Annihilate. But the attack weighted one with the Night Slash in particular is able to beat the Shadow Feraligator in CMP ties and take it out before it can Hydro Cannon it down. So I'd say those two Pokemon are looking mighty strong with this update that uh, didn't get directly buffed. Obviously, there's other Pokemon out there that are feeling a bit stronger too. As far as big losers are concerned, I don't think anything necessarily lost in a huge way. Um, you know, Wish Cash is still on top. Shadow Gligar is still very flexible and can even manage the two Water-type Pokemon that got buffed from this update. So, uh, big loser, maybe the uh, Giratina Origin form in the Great League. 
because now we got the Feraligator to harass it. It can take it down with the Shadow Claw and the Hydro Cannons. And Feraligator does have a pretty meaty attack stat to begin with, uh, usually hovering around the 123 range. And attack weighted Giratina Origin forms, if you're blessed enough to possibly get them, are usually going to wind up in like the 122 attack range. So, not exactly the best thing for Giratina Origin form. Uh, not like I'm particularly sad about that monstrosity of a super limited Pokemon. Uh, struggling with a meta update. Uh, another loser in this, I'd have to say, is Dedenne. I mean, Dedenne is already, you know, grasping for straws in a meta with Shadow Gligar and Wishcash being on top. You know, Skarmory getting the Steel Wing. Definitely not great for Dedenne. And uh, Empoleon with the Steel Wing now. So in the two shield situation, Empoleon could fully farm down a Dedenne, so I'm not too happy about that. And for Alligator getting the Shadow Claw, uh, does keep pace with Dedenne and gets charge move priority on Dedenne. So that's not the best look for Dedenne either. And the Araquidid matchup, it's still a really good matchup for Dedenne, but Water Pulse definitely hits a lot harder than the Bug Buzz. So I'm feeling pretty sad for my boy Dedenne here. When are we gonna get that Parabolic Charge update? I mean, before I was praying for like a defense buff with the Parabolic Charge, uh, but now I'm feeling like we definitely need to have the 40 energy cost because for Alligator is just going to be too much for today to handle if Dedenne can't outpace it. So, yeah. At any rate, that's all I got to say about the World of Wonders update in Go Battle League for the Great League. Uh, what are your thoughts on the winners and losers here? Are there some big winners that escaped my gaze? Uh, any big losers aside from my good friend Dedenne? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a shout out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. I imagine some of you are wondering what happened with the Giratina Origin Form PvP IV Deep Dive. I did do it on Game Press. It is in article form, but I missed the window for posting a video on YouTube and recording one. And now that it's like well after the event, I don't know. I don't want to put the time and energy into making a video that's going to get like two, maybe 3K views. You know what I mean? So the information for Giratina Origin Form is out there. Link in the description to my article on Game Press. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on it in the future if we get some sort of re-release for the Great League, which I think would be very prudent of Pokemon Go to do because, I don't know, I think it's completely bogus the way they released Giratina Origin Form, uh, making it so limited and so difficult for the common player to be able to use in the Great League. But yeah, anyways, link in the description, Giratina Origin Form, PvP IV Deep Dive.